literally all around water, you're gonna find these amazing fishing spots. Well, uh, I guess shorelines and port areas where the fishermen come in and out of. This one's really small. There are a ton of boats lined up on this tiny stretch of beach, but it is so beautiful. If I was a fisherman, okay, well, Dom is still my favorite, but, but I did see this pretty stretch here and wanted to stop and fly the drone for a second. So that was really fun. I think I can check that off my list now. We are on our way to the market, the bazaar now. So that'll be really fun. Okay, so this is kind of funny. So uh, these guys are very nice back here. Hold on, say hi. <laughs> In their shop, but I was walking by and they have this beautiful embroidery work on fabric and my mom's favorite colors are teal and orange. This one has both. So I asked if I could buy it and they said no, <laughs> that I can't be a customer. I don't know what that means exactly, except that I think that all of this work is done specifically um, on order. So only customers who come in would be able to have that work done. So these are sample pieces that show the work that they do. And then they have different um, fabrics that they sell as well. So, but it's quite funny because it's the first time someone's told me I can't be a customer. <laughs> Bye guys. Okay, so we are at um, Quetta's oldest bazaar, and from what from what I understand, basically, um, that this covered area is the ladies' market, which I do see a lot more ladies here, but there are men as well. So uh, there's a little bit lost in translation right now with the guys I'm talking to, but this is a lovely market with a little bit of everything. But there's housewares, there's like lovely trimmings and finishings and things, again, that my mother would love. There's lots of pretty fabrics and I can see, like they have some really nice um, shawls too that are quite different, more like summer shawls. Because I've been here mostly in the winter so I've seen so many like warm, warm shawls. And now they look like they're getting a little bit lighter weight. The ladies definitely do not like being uh, videoed. And even if I get remotely close, they cover up. There's more burkas here than I've seen anywhere else. Oh, so cute. Okay, a mom and daughter just walked by a matching clothes. That's really sweet, but I won't show you. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna turn you around so you can see what I'm seeing. It goes on for quite a while and it's super festive. I'll try and buy a couple things, see if I can be a customer somewhere. Okay, I'm thinking that the ladies part of the market must have ended back there because all of a sudden this place just, got, like I've literally only walked about 10 meters longer or further, but it's become insanely much more busy. See if we can find something to buy, something for my mommy. Okay, if I video. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the name of your oh, store? Okay. My name's Mama Choi. <laughs> okay, there we go. And I finally found something to buy for Mom. Um, she quilts a lot. She sews a lot. She does a lot of projects, and they have these beautiful trimmings. So I bought her three favorite colors, and yay, something for Mommy.
center of water and are heading out now, woo, quite remotely, to a couple of historic sites. Uh, we're going to Victoria's Hut is what it, what it is called. And the drive is beautiful. It's remote and rugged and desolate, but very, very pretty. And in that same location, there are quite a few historic sites, some left over from like World War II. Okay, and we're also going to Daran Village, which is like a trifecta of fabulousness. There's a pretty village, there's beach, mountains, and I think desert. So I have taken most of my advice um, and my list of things I wanted to show you from my buddy Safe from the YouTube channel Balochistan Land of Beauty. Um, he consulted with me again for this trip to Balochistan for this particular video. So I'm really excited. Most of what you'll be seeing, hopefully you haven't seen a lot and uh, you definitely would have seen on Safe's channel. I'll put links down below to his original videos because they're fabulous and much more informative than what I will be showing you. I'll be giving you a tour. Um, he goes into detail about the history of things. So let's, uh, I think we still have, well, I don't see anything up ahead of me, so I'm guessing we still have a while to go. Um, I'll show you the view and turn you around right now. Okay guys, how super cool is this? So, uh, water is back this way. I'd say we've been on the road 30-ish, 40 minutes. And I'm in the middle of this big road. There's no one here. So, um, this is a stopping point. So, this way is Iran. About 30, 30 minutes down the road is Iran. Then this way, which is where we're going, is to Juwani, which is where we're going for the Victoria's Hut and uh, the World War II landing strip to Daran, Darwan, Daran, I think it's Daran Village. And maybe if we stick around long enough or things take long enough, we'll actually watch the sunset there. And the way that it's, the way that I've heard it from everyone is that it's the most beautiful place to watch the sunset, partially over Pakistan, partially over Iran, and the way that the, the water and the land come together, it's supposed to be the most beautiful in all of the Gwadar region to watch the sunset. So that's kind of the goal. I think we might be a little early for it and we'll have to turn back, I'm not sure, but let's see. We've got the just one uh, police vehicle today no ATF guys because it's very safe we don't even need them but protocols guys you gotta follow the protocols all right it's nice stretching our legs say hi Awad. Asad. Oh, we have the DC team all right let's go guys thank you it's okay we go yeah, we're going. And I've got, I'm doing work, so I'm trying to export videos from my phone to my laptop. I'm merging and editing videos that I've shot already here as well. We've got like two charging setups going. We are very professional in here. Victoria's Hut and everywhere else that we're going this afternoon, you're going to want to stop for lunch. There aren't a lot of lunch spots um, outside of water. So bring a picnic and roll up to this secret beach. This is not a tourist spot. This isn't anywhere that the, um, the team that I'm riding with has ever taken a guest. 
So this is the secret beach of guns, G-U-N-Z. This was a, I guess, a holding ground for munitions in World War II, hence the name. But it's now this remote, beautiful village. The people live off fishing. Just look at it. beautiful and peaceful and oh my god it's, it's wonderful there's a really cool breeze whipping through I'm not sweating for the first time today outdoors which is awesome but this is called guns I will try and find a Google Maps link and put down below but this is the secret spot to come there's lots of people swimming as well down the beach so bring your swimming costume, bring your lunch, come and enjoy, an, I don't know, a couple of hours here and then head over for Victoria's Hut, everything else, and then sunset at Juwani. picking up a hermit crab, but it was a gigantic sea snail. Um, there are tons of them. Most of them are teeny tiny. Oh, uh, sorry, water. <laughs> I need to dry off soon. Uh, most of them are teeny tiny, but there was one that was just massive. So I can see how they easily live off the sea. It's insanely abundant, even here on the shoreline. I found a couple of other things as well. I'm not sure what they are, um, but this is your spot guys. Definitely come here for the secret Guns Beach picnic spot. Totally recommend this place. Oh, some fishermen coming in. Let's see. It's there. Okay guys, one, one tip. Um, so I am pretty dirty. Well, not dirty, sandy. Uh, it was actually CM John Kamal who reminded me over and over again that I wasn't dirty at Choliston Desert Rally. I was dusty. So going on that, let's call this sandy, not dirty. Um, but I need some water to rinse off my feet. So when you're coming, bring a bottle, like recycle a bottle of water, but just put tap water in there and bring because you'll want to uh, clean off your feet before you get back in the car. Because mine are gross. All right. That was so much fun. Oh, so much fun. Ooh, this is hot. Oh, this might have been a worse idea than I think. Okay. Oh, it's going to keep getting hotter too. Huh. I'm not very smart. <laughs> Okay, you will never believe that I was actually burning, like my feet were burning. So, uh, my two saviors here. <laughs> I'm like sat in the car, but even as I walked around just to get in the car, it burned my feet. Damn. So, yeah, they get. Shukriya. <laughs> so, they came and like I just sat in the car, but I swear the bottom of my feet are burned right now. Hold on. Let's see? Yeah, like you can see how red it is. Ow, they hurt. Okay, wow, that was so stupid. I haven't been on hot sand, unprotected like that in so long. I don't know how I used to do it when I was a kid, like at the beach. But anyway, okay, 
We are off now to where are we going? We're going to Jiminy. Jiminy. Victoria. Victoria Hut. Okay, cool. Why are you there? Okay guys, well this was a perfect recommendation by my friend Safe at the YouTube channel, Bildoch Stanland of Beauty. He's normally super spot on, not 100% of the time, but normally. And this is wonderful. The house itself reminds me of something out of the Netflix uh, show, The Crown, that you saw the current queen in when she was younger, in like Africa. I can't remember which country they were in on the continent, but it's, it's quaint and small. There's a bedroom where the queen slept here just charming and lovely there's a sitting room and kind of an office uh, and uh, a sitting room and an office and dining room i will show you everything but the views that they had and the walks that they must have taken just walking out here and spending time out on the beach must have been wonderful because i don't see waves really and it just, it feels like you're in this peaceful, tranquil bay. It's absolutely delightful. The only thing I will tell you is that you need prior authorization to actually step foot in here. It is managed and run by the Coast Guard. It sits on land, on Coast Guard land. So get approval, I'm assuming from the tourism board or the DC's office, because this is very special. You definitely wanna check this out. It feels like you've stepped back in time and that you're experiencing something that very few people do because this is not a very touristy spot, guys. All right, uh, let's go on a tour. I was saying thank you to the team here and they said don't you want chai I was like yes oh my god I'm having chai in Queen Victoria's hut so I quite literally have tea in Queen Victoria's hut Pakistan yes oh I have chai I don't know if she drank chai yeah it's really weird though okay it's a little bit weird they put me on my own and gave the other guys the chai someplace else which I know, I, I know that that's kind of a respect thing, but I'd just rather hang out with everybody, but I'm just kind of enjoying oh, this room, imagining that the queen was here and all of that. So, all right. And the view is so pretty. So pretty.
guys, well due to a bit of a misfire on one of the locations that I thought we wanted to go, I've now ended up, well we've all ended up in this amazing like granite mountain that's near the Darren village but we never found the village that we were looking for. Um, so instead we ended up coming up on this amazing place that was a bit difficult for the vehicles that were in to navigate because neither are four-wheel drive but we were able to find a spot where um, I could then walk up with one of my lovely police escorts and we I, I was able to just fly the drone so I want to show you everything this beach down below this is supposed to be near Darren village um, so if you can actually find that, that's great. Um, there's no signal right now with data plans on Jazz or Telenor or uh, what is mine, Zong. So I can't tell you the exact GPS coordinates, but just roaming around in this area is absolutely breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. And it's really, really close to the World War II airstrip. So we're just on the other side of the airstrip. So um, you can find that um, easily on Google. The rest I'm not so sure how to help you with, but oh, that was fun. Okay guys, we have just had a marvelous thing happen. We were told no, no, no to access Giovanni Airport, which is an old World War II airport that was um, utilized mainly by the United States uh, military, their air force and the allied forces. And it was a stop point for uh, flights going to Karachi, UAE, uh, Cairo, and other destinations. But during World War II, this was a very important site, well, a very important base. And it's basically closed off to foreigners. You have to get special permission again. And when we rolled up, we hadn't asked for the permission in advance, but somehow between the team here, these guys were marvelous and got us in. So this is the Giovanni Airport. It hasn't been utilized in decades is my guess. Um, it's now just a historical site, but there's remnants in the back here, if you can see, of some old, um, oh gosh, I don't even know what the hell that is. It actually just looks like something you roll cement with, so I'm not sure if that's actually something that's from this um, historic site, but it's quite a lovely little base, and if you, um, back in the, I guess, uh, I don't know, decades, a couple of decades ago, in the 70s, 80s, if you were to come here, there were notes and um, stories of the Air Force members who served, who passed through here, who left them, I guess, up on the walls. So I'm gonna take a look around, see if I can find anything. I don't think so by the looks of it, but it's a lovely little place. If you're a history buff, you definitely wanna stop here. Definitely contact either the tourism board or DC's office or someone to get some permission first. Okay guys, turns out where I was standing before was actually in front of the newly renovated building that's also old and now abandoned. But behind me here is actually the original. And we peeked into the windows, but they are locked. Um, and there aren't any, they, they've taken all of the artifacts, all of the notes that I had read about, all of that, um, of course, to keep them safe somewhere. I don't know where or what museum they're housed in, but I'm assuming somewhere because it sounded like a really lovely thing to have kept around as a memory. Okay, I find this insanely cool. So, Gwadar, 61 kilometers that way. Wait. Pfft. I have the dorkiest ass hair right now. And then the Iran border, 30 kilometers that way. That is so cool. It just, yeah, it's places you don't always think you're going to get to. And okay, I'm not in Iran, but that's cool. Hey guys, 
guys, we have, well, I've hopped out of the car and um, one of the police have had to come. Look at what's there. It's camels just roaming around. Oh my God, I'm gonna make it my friend. How do I make it my friend? Okay, I don't think it's gonna be my friend. I think I have to give this up because we've been chasing them. Well, you can see the vehicles are back there. Not having the camels love me is a sign it's time to close out the vlog. Um, I just went and tried to feed one an apple. I'm not really sure what camels eat except for like grass and grains and things. But an apple from an American was not one of those things that they wanted. So we are headed back now. It should be about an hour to get back to Guadar. And then I'm gonna shower and the DC of Guadar has kindly invited me for chai. So I'm going for chai and hopefully sparkling conversation this evening. So that'll be very fun. I'd also like to give a big shout out and thank you to the DC, the ADC, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> everybody who, because this trip, um, I'm not doing as easily for everyone involved as my first trip. Um, it's taking a lot more logistics and a lot more um, kindness from the districts to help me do the videos that I want to do and I know that that's been a bit of a pain in the rear. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope if you come to Guadar you will consider doing some different things and not doing just the same, you know, couple of bits. I highly recommend coming out to Giovanni like we did. Um, the historical sites that I visited were amazing. And the only thing I was missing but I didn't have time for tonight was the sunset time lapse at the border of Iran and Pakistan, which has been on my list since the start, sadly. But it's other people have shot that video and I know how beautiful it is. So when you come, do plan to stay for the sunset and take that in because it is just one of the most marvelous sunsets here. So big hug to everybody. Stay safe. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening wherever you are in the world, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!